call it the strawberry moon, as it signals that it's time to begin harvesting the strawberry fields, though this one had a red hue to it too. We had gone to that field alone to watch it rise, but by the time it broke the tree line, we were no longer alone. It was early June, and we had just got back from our trip to Maine. We weren't far from home when I turned off the main route and stirred the dust on an old road that lined the river, as the light was golden and I knew Allie would love this spot. <laughs> Is that pink mountain laurel? Yeah. I've only ever seen it white. And the mountain laurel was just starting to bloom. It's little spontaneous divergences like this that ground me and remind me of who I am. They're like a breath of fresh mountaintop air for the soul. A little pocket of time where you're right where you want to be, safe, happy, content, aware that it's ephemeral, making it that much sweeter. And this moment felt like the turning point at which summer arrived in full force. The first hay of the season was happening all over the hills, and you could smell it every time you drove with the windows down. And my childhood summer indicators, the roadies at the little red house I grew up in, were flashing code red. Time for the first mow of the little lawn at the cabin. And I did a lot of work to the van to get it ready for summer, which I'll show you in the next video. And the garden was taking shape as we added more and more to the space every chance we got. We spent plenty of beautiful day in our apartment office, keeping the work-play balance in check. And I tried something new with my sourdough starter and made bagels for the first time. <laughs> We're 
really pretty lazy. <laughs> Lucky now. Ready? Wait a second. Looks good to me. <laughs> You gotta boil them before you bake them to keep them from rising and turning into buns. And it's of the utmost importance that you have one while it's hot out the oven. Though be careful, as one can turn into three very quickly. got to spend some really pretty days in the dirt as we planted as much as we could before it got too hot and dry. Now that the forest had fully woken up, we were seeing more and more animals every day we spent in the hills. And my good friend Mitch moved home from Colorado and found an incredible spot to live at with a pond full of bass and cross-country ski trails all around. Are you kidding me? Hey, hey man. Well, it's an interesting story, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm coming. I'm just really excited. I'll tell you that. Does that work? <laughs> well, you should be happy. <laughs> oh, true, yeah. <laughs> It's a complete Eden. He loves it too. Yeah, he, he, it's fucking weird because he doesn't usually love it. <laughs> Dude, I, there's like part of me. There's ants everywhere. That's not good. <laughs> the beams, wood stove. Oh, it's bigger than it looked. I know. And what's even cool about the beams is that they're switched outlets. Up top, it's like it was made for me to like just bring lights. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? I love the mine. It just keeps getting cooler. Like to have a urinal and a real sauna. Yeah, I took one this morning. Dude, French doors, like. Oh, uh, dude, this is like a. It's like Adam and Eve tree. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. And while I was at Mitch's, I got a call from John, who asked if I wanted to go swimming. And though I had work to do, I hadn't seen John in a while, and sometimes you gotta take your hands off the wheel and let life steer you where you need to be. I see you're participating in uh, No Mo May. <laughs> oh, we there we go. Chicken. John stopped working as a carpenter full time 
and has started his own business building driveways and patios and any sort of dreamscape. I'm happy to see him take the leap and put his time in his own hands. And I'm curious to see how it goes. I'm sure I'll be jumping in machines to help him along the way. See, he's got another layer. <laughs> What's this tree? My apple tree. I didn't know you had one. Mm. -hmm. Wow. Mm. Got anything on your mind? Like what? So there was a little project he was working on at his grandfather's farm that he wanted to show me, and then we figured we'd hit the river down below thereafter. <laughs> They're not going anywhere yet. <laughs> like even with an excavator pushing on them. They led on a horizon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was over here. Makes me think of my baby. The water was brisk, so we only did a quick dip. And then we took out the fly rod to see if any of the native brookies would play ball. Reel some in. You got, make sure it stays alive. Dude, you did it! <laughs> John hadn't used a fly rod much since we were kids, and I could tell he was having a blast getting the hang of it again. That was sweet. That was... I need to learn how to reel him in, though. Yes. Oh, Kyle, look at that. Yes, 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 John, John, John. <laughs> that was such a good strike. We had a beautiful June afternoon together, and he had me take some of the Siberian irises by his woodshed so I could give them to Allie. And after breaking the seal with John and actually reeling some fish in, I couldn't stay off the water. And the moon's belly was growing every night.
And it was only a week or so after that Allie said the strawberry moon was ready to rise. And so we went to the highest and most clear spot I could think of, to where the boba links dip and dive. And we set up our observatory there on the top of the earth in the golden summer haze, waiting for the full-bellied moon. And just after sunset, we turned our attention to the east, and there she was. This is insane, for real. (laughs) And it wasn't long before the rest of the Hilltown Critters came out to watch the show. As the lightning bugs started zapping around, and a few different packs of coyotes started yipping at each other across the field. Or maybe they were just howling at the moon. They were on all sides of us, giving us a surround sound, full sensory experience. And we stayed up there well into the night, soaking it all in. Wow. It's so cool. Wow, oh my gosh. He was like racing with us. I wanna see if I can pull that one up. That was so cool looking. 
Ooh, it's really chilly. And as June ticked on, I got out fishing with my pops a few times. And Allie and I got to the cabin as much as we could, though computer work was keeping us inside more than we'd like. But no matter how the days would unfold, I was training my mind to be grateful for them. Because even if I had to stay diligent and sit in the hot office working on a sunny Saturday, I was balancing that out with an evening escape to somewhere I loved. There you go. <laughs> the presentation is everything, you know? It is. And when I paused and reflected, I realized the life I had been dedicated to building for many years was happening right now. Three summers ago, I was working so much I had no time to go fishing. Two summers ago, I got out a couple times. Last summer, a couple more and with less guilt. And this summer, I had already been out more than the last three combined with no guilt, and it was only June. And what I've learned is that true lasting change can be gradual. It's hard to realize and appreciate because as one area of your life evolves in the direction you dreamed, new challenges and speed bumps happen in other areas, distracting you and bringing new strains of stress. And while I had some congestion in certain life categories, the important categories that keep my soul healthy were progressing beautifully. I just had to remember to stop and count my chickens every once in a while. If you're only focused on active progression, you'll lose track of where it is you progressed from. And reflecting on that distance is just as important as increasing it. And after a lengthy and expensive trip to the doctors, Old Blue was back and better than ever. And having her back changed the whole mood of the summer. We'd spend a few hours landscaping at the cabin after long computer days, getting ready for the midsummer cabin renovation spree, which would take a lot of planning, forethought, and energy. Look at this Often reminded of how every second we spent in the forest helped keep our minds healthy. Isn't this so cool?
driving out a dog. I tried that one out. <laughs> and I said, wow, you've, you've got a ferruled one? Aluminum ferrules? I have three Vince Cummings originals and I have two of Andy's tribute rods that were made on Vince's blanks. I forgot to order fly goop. That's what I wanted was float. And I keep forgetting. To... Yeah. I was going to get a black one because they come in black or silver. Mm -hmm. And for Father's Day, we went to our favorite stretch of river, caught a fish each with a few good strikes too, and saw endless trout insects up and down the banks. And the van was running beautifully making these summer days feel something special. got out for our first paddleboard of the year one Sunday afternoon before calling together some damn good kids for a pizza party at Jack's Pond. I but bet. It felt really good though. You know what I mean? It was slow and steady and hour after hour. And I was like, I'm doing this. This is cool. You know? It's the best work there is. It's just really comfortable. I had no issues. I didn't hurt my back. <laughs> I didn't yeah. die. JB, so it's. Surely. It's as deep as I am tall. Right really? Here. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Surely you can't be serious. Yeah. I'm stuck on your <laughs> And while John wasn't around, his father dropped by and stayed for a while. It's always a treat to catch up with JB and soak up a little Hilltown wisdom. What rock? Look at this. Oh, so it's all different now. Now there's a rock. 
<laughs> Didn't hear about we this in the initial report. Before. I'm in the Red House. I gotta tell you, you, you know the little stream down there? Yeah. I literally, I made it so there was like a, maybe a hole this deep. Really? That's enough. There's a big boulder that was washed out and the water did this in a flood. Yeah. So I kept digging it. And one day I looked and there's all these native trout. took Allie to a field where I knew there would be fireflies. But I had never in my life seen this many. And though the camera couldn't do it justice, the moon lit the landscape like a soft light, and there were hundreds and hundreds of zaps every second. And as we drove off in that old VW, I imagined the lightning bugs watching us light up the night, wondering how. In the same way, we danced in the road with our eyes wide, staring at them. Ah! <laughs> 